Hi, ArcfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Monday morning, October the 28th. There is currently no tropical activity in the Atlantic Basin. However, I do expect that there will be a surge of activity beginning uh, early part of November, probably the first 10 days or so of the month of November. We have been tracking a tropical disturbance that uh, moves regularly along the global tropics using an index known as the Madden-Julian Oscillation, and we'll show that in a moment or two, and that suggests there will be a, a transition over the next several days from downward motion in the Atlantic Basin to upward motion in places like the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean Sea, southwestern part of the Atlantic. That's why I expect to see a surge of activity, probably more than one tropical system in that 10 day or so time period from around October 31st, November 1st to the 10th or 11th or so. This is the region that will monitor closely over the next several days. It's too early to say exactly where these tropical storms uh, may develop, but again, I expect one, two, maybe even three in this 10-day period. And really, there's kind of an overall pattern change that looks like it'll come uh, during the month of November. One that certainly should uh, have better chances for rainfall in the mid-Atlantic region, but also the uh, changes not only with the positioning of that tropical disturbance uh, uh, related to MJO, but also the Arctic Oscillation and North Atlantic Oscillation. We'll talk about that too over the next few minutes. But again, this is the area that I expect to see a surge of activity uh, during those first 10 days or so of uh, November. Now, we can switch right here. Let me clear the deck here and switch to the Eastern Pacific Ocean and we'll see, in fact, there are a couple of systems out there over the Eastern Pacific and that's where that uh, tropical disturbance is located right now. Again, that's tracked with the MJO and this will basically translate to the east and start to produce some upper motion by the end of this week over the Caribbean Sea, Gulf of Mexico and southwestern Atlantic Ocean. Well, let's kind of go over this phase diagram of the Madden-Julian Oscillation. Again, this is an index that meteorologists use to track a tropical disturbance, really a, an area of th showers and thunderstorms that moves kind of on a regular basis across the global tropical region. And this time of the year, if it sets up shop over the Atlantic Basin, it generally results in enhanced upward motion and an enhanced chance of named tropical systems. Now we are getting to the to the end of the climatological uh, period of tropical activity, but nonetheless I do expect uh, some named tropical systems, again maybe more than one, maybe two or three in that 10 day or so period from the end of this week all the way into about November 10th or 12th or so. On this particular kind of a map the Madden-Julian Oscillation moves on a counterclockwise fashion. So we're right in this region right here, the 28th of October. These particular phase numbers here represents different locations around the global co uh, tropics where that tropical disturbance or area of uh, thunderstorms exists. And we rotate around through phase seven, then into phase eight, and finally into phase one by the early part of November. This is all the way out to uh, November 11th here at the end of this forecast time period. Here's the uh, time period for this forecast all the way from today, the 28th of October to the 11th of November. So again, we kind of move in this fashion and this time of the year, these particular phases, phases eight, one, and even two usually result in that enhanced upper motion over the Gulf of Mexico, southwestern Atlantic, Caribbean Sea. In other words, uh, phase eight and one and two this time of the year lead to enhanced chance of tropical activity in the Atlantic Basin. Well, let's take a look at a couple other teleconnection indices. This one is the North Atlantic Oscillation and similar to the Arctic Oscillation, they are both now in positive territory, but both undergo a uh, relatively sharp drop to at least neutral over the next couple of weeks and maybe even into negative territory. And the MJO eventually passes through phases eight and one and ultimately then into uh, phases two and three. So later in the month of November, these kind of movements of the MJO and the movement 
of the uh, AO and NAO suggest colder weather pattern for the eastern states. We get very warm, uh, first in the central plains this week and then into the eastern part of the U.S. Wednesday, Thursday, for example, much above normal temperatures in the eastern U.S. And Wednesday will be perhaps record-breaking warm across the central plains. But the changes in these teleconnection indices, including the MJO, later in the month of November, uh, suggests some colder weather will move into the eastern states, let's say by the middle and certainly the latter part of November. Well, before we take a look at a computer forecast model run, uh, here's one last teleconnection index known as the PNA, the Pacific North America pattern. And when this index moves from negative territory to positive territory, as is forecasted to do over the next couple of weeks, the red here represents a forecast, that usually results in an upper level ridge setting up across the western U.S., the western part of Canada, and that in turn can increase the chance of colder air masses making their way from Canada into the central and eastern U.S. So this combined with the change in the AO and NAO and even the change in the M. J-O suggests some pattern changes during the month of November from uh, warmer than normal conditions over the first, let's say, 10 days or so to colder than normal pattern in the central and eastern U.S. for the middle and perhaps the latter part of November. Well, let's return to the uh, focus on the tropical activity and this time of the year, I've mentioned this before, whenever there's strong high pressure ridging over southeastern Canada or northeastern U.S., watch out for the possibility of tropical systems making their way underneath the ridge from the uh, east to the west across the southwestern Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico, or the Caribbean Sea. And we're starting off the week here, and this is the mean 500 millibar height anomaly for the current five-day period all the way uh, into the end of the week here, November 2nd. And indeed, we have high pressure ridging uh, at the middle part of the atmosphere here, 500 millibars, centered over the eastern Great Lakes, northeast U.S. And again, that allows for the possibility of tropical waves to move in this fashion underneath the ridge. And we'll go forward, go out in time a few more days here. Again, these are 500 millibar height anomaly patterns for five-day periods. Here we go. Uh, days two to six, days three to seven, and finally days four to eight here. Now we're looking at the uh, Friday, uh, excuse me, Thursday, October 31st, all the way to November 5th, and still continuation of that high pressure ridging over New England. Again, allowing for the possibility of tropical systems kind of under, uh, uncut, undercut that ridge, go underneath it into places like the uh, Bahamas or the, or the Gulf of Mexico. And this, again, is an area that we'll watch over the next 5, 10, 15 days or so. Well, let's wrap up with the surface forecast maps from last night's Zero Z run of the GFS. And look at this, no surprise, as we start off the new week here on Monday morning, October 28th, virtually dry across the entire nation. It's been unbelievably dry in the Mid Atlantic region. Philadelphia, for example, has had zero rainfall during the entire month of October at the official weather station in Philadelphia, Philadelphia International Airport, otherwise known as PHL for its uh, abbreviation. Strong high pressure and it's cold high pressure situated over uh, northern New England, southeastern Canada this morning and it was a chilly morning to start the new work week along the I-95 Carter region. Meanwhile, out in the middle part of the country, this is a southwesterly fetch of air on the back side of this high pressure, this high pressure area. Winds blow clockwise and this is producing this warm up uh, over the uh, northern plains with this long fetch of southwesterly air. And we'll move forward in time here. And that uh, it, uh, kind of exacerbates the uh, above normal conditions by Tuesday and Wednesday across the middle part of the nation. And here we go into Wednesday. Now, this is midweek, and we still have this long fetch of air flowing from the warm southwest, south central U.S., into the Great Lakes, into the southeastern part of Canada. Winds blow counterclockwise around lows and clockwise around highs. There's a high right here, and that is causing this intense fetch of air 
that's pumping milder than normal air to the Great Lakes, and that moves in uh, to the Mid-Atlantic region here on Wednesday right here, probably highs in D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, 75 to 80 degrees, much above normal. Now, here's an interesting feature here, a strong cold front here, and it actually may end the drought the dry streak in Philadelphia, for example, here we are on Friday morning, not a guarantee, but a chance of showers associated with its frontal system by Friday morning. It's located right in this region here, but could actually be some shower activity in the mid-Atlantic region, let's say late Thursday night, the wee hours of the morning going into Friday through Friday morning associated with this incoming a cold frontal system. Again, not a guarantee, but the best chance we've had in a while. And here we go by Friday morning. Look at this. It's actually producing not a, not a heavy rain event by any means, but some showers would be a, quite a change. Again, we haven't had a drop of rain in Philadelphia. We could go all the way through Thursday, the last day of the month, Halloween day, October 31st, without that uh, rainfall in uh, October, but this is by Friday morning, and again, watch out for the possibility of some showers late Thursday night, Friday morning. We'll go out a little bit farther in time, and that front slides off the coast, and it's paving the way for a nice weekend in the Mid-Atlantic region on Saturday and Sunday, and here we go, some tropical activity starting to show up by Saturday, November 2nd. That's it for now. For ArcFieldWeather.com, this has been meteorologist Paul Dorian.